Are you tired of spending hundreds of dollars in your precious time on well-marketed creams only to end up disappointed and broke? Yes! Breakthrough studies have figured out how to stop your development and keep you young without breaking the bank and helping you shut off a couple dress sizes along the way. How do I do it? Worms do it. All they do is starve themselves and you can too. Just come with me and I'll tell you all about our new groundbreaking research that can help you live longer. C. elegans or nematodes are simple animals with a short life cycle which is in four stages, the L1, L2, L3, and L4 stage separated by molts. Development through these stages occurs when a signaling pathway is activated. A signaling pathway occurs when a molecule activates a specific receptor on the outside or inside of the cell. This bonding triggers, triggers a series of events that cause a response. It can even be amplified so one signal causes many responses. Our study looks at how these nematodes respond to being starved and how their reproductive systems are affected. Starvation can cause developmental arrest at four stages so that the nematode becomes frozen at one point of their lives, making them live longer. We looked at the L3 and L4 stages of development and the progression of the vulva and molting of the nematodes to assess development. Food was taken away in the late L2 or middle of L3. The organisms were starved by placing them in an M9 buffer for 24 hours, causing the nematodes to go into the dower stage, an alternative stage that the nematode larva goes into to survive harsh conditions. Afterwards, their developmental stage was assessed. The animals that moved when they were poked at the tail were considered to be alive, and the ones that did not move were considered to be dead. The scientists also looked for checkpoints that stop progression to the next larval stage, causing developmental arrest. We found out once vulval fate is determined, cells continue dif differentiation and development during the L3 and L4 stages. When food gets taken away, the larvae go into arrest and enter an inactive state. The state of dormancy allows the larvae to continue living without needing nutrition for further development. The graph on the left shows continued development throughout the stages in the presence of food. The graph on the right shows the plateau of larva growth in the absence of food. However, when conditions Im improve and food is returned, the development is resumed. The arrests act as stop signals to halt further development. The larva can only enter an arrest when it reaches a checkpoint or specific times in the vulval development. There are two checkpoints in the stages studied, one in early L3 and another in early L4. The arrest is systemic, meaning that entire systems are shut down. Once one checkpoint is bypassed, development continues until the next checkpoint. Another process we analyzed was molting, or shedding of the outer cuticle. Molting su successfully occurs once the larva passes through a checkpoint. An arrest occurs after the molting and before new cu cuticle synthesis. The key here is to stop nutrient consumption after molting. Animals were mutated with a DAF-16 were able to progress. They were removed from food during the L2 stage and after 24 hours, 63% of the mutants had passed the L3 checkpoint. None of the wild type had progressed. When the mutants were removed from food in the L3 stage, they bypassed arrest and 72% of them had progressed into adulthood after two days. DAF-16 inhibits DAF-9. When nutrition is present, insulin-like peptides from the breakdown of food stimulates DAF-2. DAF-2 inhibits DAF-16. This allows DAF-9 to be expressed, causing the release of steroid hormones, which allows the organism to bypass the checkpoint. When adequate nutrients are not available, there are no ILPs to stimulate DAF-2. DAF-16 continues to inhib inhibit DAF-9 and no steroid horm hormones are released. The organism does not pass the checkpoint. When DAF-16 is non-functional, even in the presence of food, DAF-9 is expressed, causing the release of steroid hormones, allowing the organism to pass through the checkpoints. The release of the steroid hormones is key for passage through the checkpoints. Remember, only very small amounts of hormone is necessary to impart its effect. Similarly, when DAF-9 is overexpressed, the steroid hormones are released, irrespective of the amount of available nutrition. So why does this all occur? Sufficient nutrients are needed for complete development of structures to fulfill an organism's living functions. For example, properly form formed vulva are needed to successfully lay eggs. The checkpoint ensured that there are enough nutrients to develop these organs, and if there aren't, development pauses until there are. This prevents defects and death. How does this affect us humans? This provides insight into aspects of aging and metabolic diseases that depend on developmental pathways and are similar to the insulin-like and steroid hormone pathways of humans. Who knew I could learn so much from worms? I'll give it a try.